spinach, uh, one of our favorite dishes, a little bit more effort than plain baked potatoes but well worth it and something quite nice to make if you're having guests over. You can make them the day before and pop them in the oven, that's what's quite nice about them, or you can cook the spinach before. Now the thing about cooking spinach, I've cooked the spinach and I've cooked it with the stalks, you can see here I've squeezed it a bit but you can still see it's quite moist. and if you don't want this dish to be like really watery, you can do a couple of things. You can cut the stalks off beforehand. I've left them in because they add more bulk and they're more nutritious. Um, but the thing about spinach, if you're gonna cream it, is to actually squeeze all the juice out. And I've let this cool down. Don't try doing this when your spinach is hot. You wanna squeeze all the juice. And I know it's, you may think, well, you're squeezing all the nutrients out. It just tends to make it quite watery. So. I like to squeeze as much of it out as possible as if you're just making straightforward creamed spinach. Now, creamed spinach I normally make with a bit of olive oil and a bit of our seasoning salt. The salt that really, really makes spinach taste spectacular is the seasoning salt. And the reason for that is because of the nutmeg that it contains. Nutmeg lifts the flavor of spinach and this contains a bit of black pepper, some paprika, some sea salt, a couple of other spices and then of course that nutmeg. It's just enough. If you add too much, you get this dreadful taste and it actually burns your tongue. So we're gonna blend that up and then... I'm gonna add a little bit of fresh cream to that while the motor's running. You can, if you're feeling extravagant, add a bit of feta cheese to that but I have feta cheese in the salad, so I'm not adding it to both. dollop of extra virgin olive oil to that as well. Just give it a little bit more flavor. Let me just taste that to check that it. Mmm, delicious. Now I'm going to have to check whether I've got green things in my teeth. Do I have any green things in my teeth? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now the potatoes I've pre-baked. I'm gonna cut them in half. You can cut them any, any way, really. Just the way that, actually I should have cut this the other way, because it'll lie easier. I'm scooping the potatoes out of their skins. You can scoop it out and mash it by hand, or you can do it what I do is the lazy way, but you've got to be careful not to over-process it. Because potato tends to go kind of gluey and sticky if you process it too much, so you've got to use your pulse button on your food processor. Uh, otherwise, just mash it by hand. But these potatoes have cooled down quite a bit, so they've got quite firm, and for me to Stan trying to mash them now. It's going to be almost, well, not Im quite impossible, but it's going to make, make it quite difficult for me. So, okay. 
So now we want to use that pulse button. And the pulse button usually on most food processes is in the opposite direction to the speed one. So you, you would pulse. And what that does is pulsing stops you over processing food. I could probably put quite a bit more potato in here. I made quite a bit of spinach. big chunks in there so I'm going to go a little bit more okay I'm going to pop these shells and I'm going to put this onto a baking sheet um, and I'm going to pop them back into the oven and then just heat them through I'm just getting the baking sheet. Somebody's just getting me the baking sheet. I'm going to pop them into a hot oven. Hot, I'd say 200 degrees centigrade, which would probably be about 400, 450 Fahrenheit, and probably just for 15 or 20 minutes to heat them through. If you want to get them a bit crisp on top, then stick the grill on and um, grill it or uh, broil it. And you have a delicious dish. Okie dokie. Pop that in the oven. Um. Now, green beans are not my favorite vegetable. When I was a kid, I used to eat them smothered in cheese sauce or raw straight out of the garden. And that's probably the way I like them best is to take raw green beans and use them in a dip like an avocado dip. But to make them into a salad or a savory dish, they're quite nice. You can do this particular dish as a cooked version of it. You can, everything I'm doing, you can cook, or you can do the raw salad version of it. And both ways, it's absolutely delicious. But I'm doing it as our salad because we've got our cooked meal. And what I've done is I've taken the green beans, I've washed them, and then I've just sliced them just diagonally, as thinly as possible. Some of them are quite chunky and thick. You know, in the old days, our grandmothers used to stand and slice beans with a razor blade. Can you actually believe that? I know Meredith, who's actually filming here, is only 22 years old. And uh, I bet she can't believe that they used to slice green beans with a razor blade, Meredith. Yes. Hand slice it. To get it so thin that you could almost see through it. It's just a weird thing that the old Afrikaner ladies, probably so you couldn't taste it or see it. It was probably, but this gives it a diff different texture slicing it at an angle. It gives a different texture in the mouth. It gives it a different look. So it makes it just a little bit more interesting. To that, I'm going to add some sliced red peppers to give it. Your red peppers are very high in beta carotene. Your green beans are very nutritious and very high in things like calcium, magnesium, potassium, very high in minerals. And of course, being green, it contains chlorophyll, and chlorophyll is a powerful neutralizer of heavy metals. One of the very reasons I and drink barley grass juice every single day is because it contains more chlorophyll than any other food and it helps to get rid of heavy metals from pollution. So it's one, probably one of the main reasons I do it because I can't walk around with a mask over my face and live on top of a mountain where there's no pollution. So I do the next best thing, I drink barley grass juice. So I'm adding some sliced baby tomatoes to that. I've cut them into quarters and I'm going to add some sliced sort of julienne carrots to that. These are organic carrots not all my veggies are organic but the tomatoes most times are out of my garden 
um, the carrots I'm going to add to that. Slice another couple. And you don't have to add um, sliced mushrooms. But I, um, I do enjoy mushrooms in this dish. But if you're not a mushroom lover, just leave them out. Every now and again I get a comment from somebody saying, why did you put mushrooms in anything? You've got to understand something. There's not one recipe in my recipe books or on these DVDs that are carved in stone. If you want to leave one of the ingredients out and you don't like carrots or you don't like tomatoes or you don't like mushrooms, just leave them out. I'm adding some feta cheese to this. Again, you're thinking like, what are you doing getting into all this cheese? I'm trying to help people make the transition from a normal processed diet to a more natural diet. I don't eat cheese anymore because I find, as I said previously in the DVD, it causes some serious hot flushes and I'm going through menopause. So I, to avoid the hot flushes, I avoid the dairy. So some carrots to that. I'm going to add some mushrooms to that. Sliced mushrooms, just a couple of sliced mushrooms. And of course this would form your raw before you're cooked. If you want to leave the cheese out, feta cheese is not very high in protein, so you wouldn't say it's a very badly combined meal. Feta cheese probably contains about 6 to 8% protein, which is not considered a concentrated protein as such. It no. is still mucus more forming. But less than normal cheese though. Yeah, it's less than the stronger cheeses. Uh, strong cheeses can contain up to 15%, making it a concentrated protein. Those are your pecorinos and your parmesans, the strong cheese. But feta cheese is just a very salty cheese, being a milder, more like a cottage cheese, it's really salty. This is feta cheese with added black pepper in it, because normally I add black pepper to this particular salad. It has freshly ground black pepper in it. And then to that I'm going to add some olive oil. And to that I'm going to add some freshly squeezed lemon juice. Just the juice of half a lemon. I don't want to make it too tangy. If you want more tang to it, just add more. Those lovely colours. The salt that I would use in this is either the garlic and herb or the herb salt. And you may want to just marinate this a little bit. In fact, it's not a bad idea to put the mushrooms and the green beans in the bottom of the dish with the lemon juice and the olive oil and the herb salt and let it marinate before you add the other ingredients and it absorbs all those wonderful flavours from the herb salt and the olive oil. But it's a lovely looking salad. And I'll tell you, there's one way to get people to eat green beans. Just add some feta cheese to it. <laughs> okay. What we've got here now are our delicious, oh, creamed. Um, and what's happened is they've gone really crunchy at the base. They heated through, and just as an extra, what I've done is I have baked some leeks and tomatoes together in a dish, and I, I will basically would serve that with this. This is a dish that I do every now and again. It's just whole baked tomatoes or tomatoes that have been a bit mushy or a little bit overripe, just baked on top of some leeks, and it's absolutely delicious, served with... Um, with these potatoes. You know, you can remove the skins if you want to. Otherwise, you can just serve it like this. Bake leek. And some of these baked potatoes. Stuffed potatoes. And you can drizzle the tomato with a little bit of oil, and if you really want to be pedantic, you can actually remove the skin for your guests before you serve it, but they can remove their own skins, really. It's very delicious. It's just pure baked um, tomatoes.
tomato with no, nothing added to it. And you, when you bake the leeks like this, you get a little bit of a lot of the mustard oil and the allicin, and that's the stuff that tends to upset the stomach and the thyroid. So leeks, onions, garlic, spring onions are always best cooked. It's one vegetable that is best cooked. Thank you.